supporters who just arrived, um, if they could come up.
Aloha Kako. I would like to begin by acknowledging those who are with me this morning, the Royal Order of Kamehameha, the protectors of Mauna Kea and Haleakala, the academics of the University of Hawaii, and friends and family. All of us stand together and commit to fulfilling the unfinished task of Queen Liliuokalani to restore the government of the Hawaiian Kingdom. It is without question that in conspiring to overthrow the Queen and her government, the U.S. violated not only its own laws, but every tradition, agreement, treaty, and convention that bonded the international family of nations which the Hawaiian Kingdom played a pivotal role. As one of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs original trustees, and after 34 years, it has become painfully obvious that with each passing year, OHA's policies and decisions have become more aligned with the objectives of the state of Hawaii and the U.S. government and disconnected from the Hawaiian people they are mandated to serve. Over the past 20 years, independent legal research of the historical records and events surrounding the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom has helped to empower and educate the Hawaiian community about our history and our kingdom. We stand here today stronger and with a clear vision for our future. The breach of treaties, executive agreements, and illegal occupation of Hawaii by the U.S. can no longer be denied. OHA has nonetheless chosen to silence the voices of Native Hawaiians who have consistently demanded that the U.S. be held accountable for the conspiracy and illegal overthrow of a Hawaiian Kingdom government. We now know that our country still exists under international law despite the illegal overthrow of our government. We also now know that our treaties between the kingdom and nations throughout the world remain binding today despite 117 years of prolonged occupation of a neutral country. In 2014, the voices of our people were loud and clear during the events surrounding OHA's CEO letter to the Department of State asking how the United States extinguished Hawaiian independence. And we were louder still during the Department of Interior's hearings and conversations surrounding the protection of Mauna Kea. The Mauna Kea protesters have also taken root throughout every community in the islands. Our people have embraced the fact that our country remains a sovereign and independent state, albeit occupied and are ready to maintain the course initiated by our kupuna of the Kue petitions against annexation and by Queen Liliokalani in 1893 to hold the U.S. accountable here in the islands and internationally. I'm trying to figure out how come I'm having a hard time reading this because I did not put on my glasses. At age 70, I just have to have my glasses. Ah, there it is. The Mauna Kea fight is a global one. While protectors are forced to defend themselves against constant battles in an unsympathetic state court with no jurisdiction over our sovereign issues, they are also asserting their rights in the international community by filing complaints of war crimes with the Canadian government for the proposed destruction of Mauna Kea. Others have filed complaints of war crimes with the Swiss and New Zealand governments arising from the illegal occupation of Hawaii Kingdom by the U.S. and State of Hawaii. My original intention to participate in the elections and convention process was with the sole aim of advocating against any measures related to federal recognition. Today, however, I have concluded that the AHA being funded and promoted by OHA trustees is in fact a continuation of the U.S. goal 
to illegally occupy the Hawaiian Islands and have been unprincipled, defective, and divisive. It is absolutely unconscionable that the OHA trustees and the Federal Department of Interior's recent published proposal blatantly ignores the overwhelming public testimonies in opposition to federal recognition, instead only counting the written postcard testimonies. This is a perfect example of the manipulation and violations of bas basic principles of international humanitarian law. The AHA is intended to produce a new constitution and referendum with the potential to negotiate with the state and extinguish claims to our crown and government lands once and for all for Native Hawaiians. As a result of my exposure to these new re research and facts regarding Hawaii's legal status in the international community, and my feelings that this process has been and continues to be rigged to fit very specific agendas. I've come to the conclusion that my participation in the AHA as a member and delegate only serves to confuse our people and the situation. I cannot participate in a process that is not porno and have decided to remove my name from consideration to be a delegate in the AHA. We need to be steadfast and remain on the path that our kupuna have laid because we are still a sovereign and independent state. Let us not forget the speech by James Kaulia, President of Hawaiian Patriotic League, on September 6, 1897. In the spirit of Kaulia, do not be afraid, be steadfast in aloha for your land, and be united in thought. Protest forever the annexation of Hawaii until the very last aloha aina lives. Patriotism in the Hawaiian Dictionary is defined as aloha aina, and I am a Hawaiian patriot. I urge all aloha aina to oppose and boycott the process of na'i puni and the aha. We need to stop this heva, nu'i puni, its fake pathway to nationhood, and its disillusioned vision of sovereignty. We must hold fast to our rightful kingdom until the very last aloha aina lives. Protest forever, United States occupation of Hawaii. Yo, yo. Mahalo. At, at this time, I'd like to ask the Royal Order to make their presentation as they are here today to support our position. I would like to ask Kalai Moku Ali Katishe to make that presentation. Aloha mai kako. I am Ali'i Sir Alika Dishe, the Kalai Moku and Chancellor of the Royal Order of Kamehameha Ekahi. And I offer greetings on behalf of Ali'i Nui and Grand Master, Ali'i Sir William F. Roback Jr. We are honored to be here this morning standing in support with all Kanaka Maole, who through their actions believed in the truth of what happened to our kingdom. April 11, 2015 marked our 150th year anniversary since the Royal Order of Kamehameha was founded by King Kamehameha V. At a Privy Council state session held at Iwalani Palace on April 11, 1865, the subject royal decree established the mission of the order, authorizing the pursuit of its kuleana in perpetuity. As an institution of the Hawaiian Kingdom, the mission of the order was to promote an esprit de corps and loyalty to the principles and belief of the kingdom that were in keeping with the traditions and interests of its founder, Kamehameha I. On September 17, 1994, 
a resolution recognizing the existence of the Kingdom of Hawaii was passed and read to na Kanaka Maole Apau on the grounds of Mauna Ala. Given the sacred trust that the order has embraced since 1865 and subsequently reaffirmed by Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole, in keeping with Na Kupuna Kahiko, Na Kupuna, and Na Kanakamai Ole Apau, to infuse patriotism and loyalty to the kingdom, advocating in the 21st century that the Hawaiian kingdom continues to exist as an independent and sovereign state under an illegal and prolonged occupation by the United States since the Spanish-American War. We recognize the Kue petition as a clear and strong voice of our ancestors opposing to the attempt of annexation of the Hawaiian Kingdom to the United States in 1897-1898. The historical record, inclusive of mutual treaties and executive agreements, substantiate the absolute and undeniable conclusion that the occupation of the Hawaiian Islands by the United States violates every principle of law that secures the integrity of every independent state, as well as the common interests of the International Family of Nations. The order cannot and will not support any actions of others that continue to divide our people and will be steadfast in upholding the truth of what has happened to our kingdom. We will continue to maka Allah, to, every, to be ever observant, ensuring that no further harm will fall upon it. Lastly, it is with the wish of the Ali'i Nui and Grand Master that we all continue to educate ourselves and others with the truth to stand firm with Aloha and be united in our thoughts. Eho kanaka kako. We'd like to <clears throat> close our presentation with a chant and then we'll be opening up for questions.
So as, as most of you can see, <clears throat> it's very important that we're laying down the foundation about where we're going by looking back to the past. And what we see is our queen, Lili Okalani, and all of the things she did to make sure that she did not surrender, she just yielded. And I left open the door for us as future generations to follow her pathway. And all of our kupuna that signed the Kuei petition, we're following that pathway. So today, that's the basis of what we're trying to get across today for all of us to follow and look to our history to know where we're going in the future. So it's very important for us to understand where the queen was going, what she was leaving for us, and what our kupuna did, and what they left for us also. Uh, this is a sing song we can sing together. I think we all know this. Written for Lili Uokalani um, in the days following the insurgency that um, forced her to yield to the United States. And the, and the appropriate line in this song is, we will not sign the evil document of the enemy. We will sing that together. <laughs> Aloha and mahalo everybody for coming today and if any questions that the press might have uh, maybe they can come up closer and ask some questions we have some very knowledgeable people up here that can answer some of your questions This is just the beginning. The skirmish is going on now. It's like the growing pain that we're going through as Hawaiians. And there's so much more work to be done, but everybody's awake and everybody's participating. So we might not have the perfect example or the perfect product right now, but it, 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 this is just the beginning. So there's going to be other kinds of getting together, some kind of compromises, and all the kind of things we need to do as Hawaiians to get to where we're going to go. And are, are we going to 
how like how are we gonna like kind of can you ask your question louder so these oh. guys can hear too? On the way, on the way. Can you speak into the mic, please? Uh, Where either way you're going to help find self-determination. We're going to find... This is just the beginning. We're not going to give up because this is too critical. We can't grab on to something that is not right here. So we're going to be saying this is not right, but then we're going to be looking for the, the process. We're going to continue this process. It's the beginning of a process. Yeah. Uh, the reasons uh, for going out of the, the election, the kind of groundswell we hope to generate from that decision. Yeah, we're hoping to create a groundswell to say that this is not OHA's direction and OHA's goals are not the goals and direction that we should be going as a nation. So we, we're following our kupuna, we're following Queen Lilokalani, and we're also following the younger generation today that has all of that information that most of the board members on OHA never had. So with all of this information coming out of the university for facts and historical records, it's now guiding this new generation for a higher goal. And we need to follow the, the, the new generation that is now leading like on Mauna Kea, Haleakala, and what we saw at the DOA hearings, loud and clear directions that we need to go into. And that's, that's what we're trying to generate, to have that momentum going into that direction, being set by our younger generation, following the pathway of our kupuna. There will undoubtedly be some people who say some steps in the right direction are better than none at all, instead of making a big leap. What do you say to them, those who, I guess they would be moderates, or those who say baby steps are better than no steps? Well, <laughs> this is not a baby step that we're talking about here. Yeah, so, so this is a huge step. This is building a way and a pathway to a very significant place for the Hawaiian people in Hawaii. So we have to make sure that that is a pono thing. If you're going to plant a seed that is not pono, then you're going to harvest something that is not pono. It's so critical that we need, it's being rushed, there are no rules. I mean, this thing is not the kind of place or thing that we want to build our nation on. So what we're trying to do is get people to figure out how not to go into the wrong direction and to start building a better foundation for us to move forward on. And there's time to do that. You know, and this rush and all that's going on right now is not Pono, and we're trying to make sure that people understand we should not go down this, this pathway. Can the election then be called off entirely or just delayed until you feel it is done well, the right way? Yeah, right now all I'm asking for is for people not to participate. Not to participate. And there's many things that we have to participate in, but this is not one of them. Okay. Aloha. Yes, morning. Aloha. I wanted to ask you if you could clarify um, why you decided to step out of the LP I I wanted to get in because I wanted to get in there and make sure that federal recognition was going to be the, not the end goal. I wanted to go against federal recognition. I've been involved for many, many years in this process and tried to make the process pono and we failed miserably because OHA decided that the goal is federal recognition. We are going to become Indians. So I was hoping that I could change from the inside, but then when I saw who was being um, backing all of this, who was signing up, all of the names and all of the the people that shouldn't be running are running. It became very obvious that this thing is going to end up the way it's going to end up. So I decided that we should figure out how to not give our mana to this thing, but to have people take a close look at what it is and that to present an alternative. And the alternative is for us to keep following the pathway that our queen laid and our kupuna and our kuei petitions laid, that is the pathway that we should be following as Hawaiians and not becoming closer 
tied to the United States of America. And we always hear you talk about, you know, the work that you Can you clarify what that means in your stats on what you're representing today? Well, Pono, for us, <coughs> this, this whole process, you know, it's, I've been involved for many, many years. I, I, there's so many things that went wrong with the process. It was being force-fed into the Hawaiian community, no matter who spoke. The people that were talking at the um, Department of Interior hearings were loud and clear. I mean, it was loud and clear. OHA paid no attention to these voices. The DOI paid no attention to these voices. They decided that there were some postcards that came in, that they were going to go follow the postcards. So it's so obvious that these things are not Pono. That's just one example of the many examples that happened over the years that have made this process not Pono. And we all understand that you're going to reap what you plant. So it's so dangerous for us to build our house in the sand here because it's not going to last. And already it's been so divisive because we have not given time for the Hawaiian community to participate and to absorb all of these things that are going on. So I, I'm not sure why they're rushing all of this. Um, I don't think Obama is the key to our future. So the key to our future is an informed Hawaiian community. And that's what our goal is to have, an informed Hawaiian community in this process. Ideally, what would you like to see come out of all of this? Waiting one, two, three, four years? Well, I would like to see a process where we go out into the community and explain what is going on and to get input from the community. Um, this force feed process that is that started with um, the Kaka bill and all that, nothing is working, nothing is working, so therefore now we're, they're panicking, coming all the way to the state, having the state do these things, and then panicking because nobody wanted to enroll, did they grab things from the side. This thing is, is a force feed divisive process that they have ended up with. So we'd be foolish as Hawaiians to jump onto this banner and this bandwagon knowing full well that this, this car is all busted up and not ready to go where we want to go. And last question for you. Kia has been such a big movement and it, it must excite you seeing all of these young Hawaiians um, stepping up, getting involved and, and their voices are definitely being heard. How does that make you feel? Knowing that you will probably, you know, receive that, that started a lot of this war for many young Hawaiians. Um, <laughs> it makes me feel, I mean, it, it's, I, I'm going to have a hard time explaining that, but it, it's, it's like a reawakening for myself to realize that all of the work and things we've done in the past is coming back out again. The Hawaiians went to, you know, went to sleep again and now it's just, and you can never tell what's going to do it. And Mauna Kea did it. So I'm super excited about all of this, you know. I mean, I was, I'm supposed to be home in my garden right now, you know. But this is a time to be ready on the side of these young people who have the knowledge that we never had and to kako'o them and to push them forward. So I'm really, really happy to be in this position. And it's just the beginning, it seems. It is. It, is, it was like what was happening in the 70s where we were all sliding down and all becoming haoles because that's... That's what's going to be our future. And in the 70s, it went back up again. And then we plateaued. And as Hawaiians, we're grumbling with each other for the past 10, 15 years now, trying to figure out who we are. And then now it's becoming more clear again. And the young people are stepping up. And they're not taking anything from the, from the older guys from us that says, no, we need to take it a little bit at a time and we become under the United States so we can get more money. No. The goal is to make sure that we follow the, the voices of our queen and of our kupuna. So I'm really, really excited about what's happening in the young generation and all of the knowledge that they have and the fire that they have. Well, Aloha Indy. Aloha Indy. It's a question to ask here, but a difficult reality to face if it happens. What happens if the election does go through and the process continues? Oh, I mean, we're going we're gonna to be out. Whatever steps are coming, this is the beginning. We'll be there at every single step to push what we're pushing. So we don't know what's going to happen. All depends on how many people we can gather to try and steer this thing into the right direction. So today is, is one of the first steps to try and gather people and come up with a clear vision that 
We're going to follow our queen and we're going to follow our kupuna. That is the pathway that we're going to take. question that's an internal matter yeah, yeah, for the Hawaiian yeah. kingdom decide so what yeah. we need to do now first is make sure that we get rid of the occupier yeah. and once the occupier yeah. is gone then we can resolve our own internal plan yeah. so obviously yeah. your device it. why is this yeah. printer no, 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 that's no, that's that's to cook yeah, to unify yeah. yeah. so those are all legitimate questions and once we get to make sure that we're not going to become Indians which is our first and primary focus right now then we'll be dealing with those kinds of things as we go along. So those are really important things to be doing. Oh, hey. 